Sometimes you just want to watch a really gay TV show where a gay heroine gets to take front and center stage on the TV box. While this list is by no means exhaustive, here are 10 really gay TV shows to watch along with some honorable mentions. Sugar Rush. Starting with Brighton in England, Sugar Rush is a two season show from 2005, which follows the story of 15 year old Kim who's fallen in love with her wild child best friend nicknamed Sugar. Against the backdrop of her bizarre family, her queerness is the most normal part about her, which she is trying to navigate amongst the general chaos of her life. It does a good job of capturing that all encompassing, hormone charged feeling of first love. Gentleman Jack. Keeping it British, you've probably heard of this dramatization of the real-life, larger-than-life lesbian called Anne Lister. With just one season so far, but more to come, the series Gentleman Jack is based off the very detailed diary she kept during the early 1800s, both in plain English for her daily life and business dealings, and in code for her lesbian affairs. The TV show follows her life as she returns to Shibden Hall, intent on turning its fate around, and where she meets Anne Walker, a genteel woman of delicate mental health who Anne Lister decides must become her wife. It is a witty, fast-paced show that upturns our expectations of women in period pieces. It showcases the sheer courage of a heroine who bucks all expectation to remain true to who she is, a proud and resolute lesbian. Killing Eve in case you've been living under a rock, it's an award-winning show following Eve, an MI5 agent, who is striking the serial killer known as Villanelle. They become obsessed with each other, sporting tension that could be cut with a knife and a delicious game of cat and mouse. I mean, it's gay. And with the events of the third season, it seems to me that there are genuine feelings beneath all of it too, which delights my soft shipper heart, and I'm excited to see where they take the show. Although, due to COVID, that will have to wait a little longer than I might like, as the filming was delayed earlier this year. El Embercadero. Moving into Spain, this two-season show follows architect from Valencia, Alejandra, whose husband dies under mysterious circumstances. She uncovers that he was leading a double life with another woman and their daughter in a nearby village. In an effort to understand what happened to him, she poses under a false identity to get close to the woman and, well, gay. There are certainly a lot of flashbacks during the show with the dead husband, so his presence is very much felt throughout, which did weary on me because, you know, we got it. Both women loved him very much. But ultimately, it is a beautiful story of love between these two women with a certain amount of whodunit mixed in to keep things lively. Wentworth. While Australia has a particularly bad record for LGBTQ plus representation, there is one show that is still problematic, but excellent and pretty darn queer. Wentworth is a drama based off a previous Australian show called Prisoners. Set in a woman's prison, the first four seasons follow Bea Smith, a new inmate who killed her husband and follows her progress as she rises through the prison hierarchy. I admittedly haven't watched since the end of season four, when in 2016 it joined that long list of bury your gays. I have read that season five onward has a more ensemble focus, but regardless, there are a number of queer characters that grace the screen throughout all eight seasons and counting. The most notable romantic pairings are Frankie and Bridget starting in season one and Bea and Ellie in season four. This TV show is not for the faint-hearted. It's violent, brutal, and, pardon the pun, took no prisoners. But it is also really good. Orange is the New Black. Well, I could hardly mention Wentworth without mentioning Orange is the New Black. With multiple accolades and multiple queer characters, this show is very, very gay. It also is a comparatively lighter outing than its Australian counterpart. It follows Piper as she enters into minimum security prison for a drug trafficking offence some 10 years prior to find her ex-lover and partner in crime Alex there, along with a host of other inmates, each with their own story to tell, and with actual diversity. Lost Girl Bo is a descendant from Faye but grew up with a human family. When she hits puberty, her succubus traits surface, causing her to kill her first boyfriend during their first encounter, having drained all the sexual energy from him. This led her to feeling very lost until she saves a human, Kenzie, from rape and effectively falls into the battle between good and dark Fae. This is also where she meets the human doctor, Lauren, and there is an immediate spark between the two. 
Just to note, there is also Dyson, a werewolf love interest too that causes a sort of triangle, but the show is fun and plenty gay. Ratchet. What is better than two real life lesbians playing lesbians who lesbian together on a TV show? Not much. This beautifully written, exquisitely shot and acted show is so well crafted and gripped me throughout its recent first season. It follows Mildred Ratchet, who has inveigled her way into a job as a nurse at a mental health sanatorium in the 1940s to get close to her brother. The question, at least in my mind, was just how far would Ratchet go in an effort to save her brother because her sanity certainly seemed to be in question. Nevertheless, she catches the eye of Gwendolyn, a confirmed lesbian, and well, Mildred Ratchet is more than a little intrigued. she -Ra. Surprisingly, an area that has been doing rather well with queer representation in the last little while is animation. she -Ra joins a lengthening list of cartoons aimed at children that are helping to normalise LGBTQ+. It follows the story of Adora, who was raised by the Horde along with Catra, her best friend. When Adora realises that the Horde has been lying to them their whole lives about the ongoing war they've waged against the Rebellion, she escapes and joins up with the other side, for which Catra sees as a deep betrayal of their relationship. This drives the five seasons, and by the showrunner's own admission when it came to finishing the show's arc, she'd set it up so that the only possible conclusion had to be a coming together of these two characters, and it worked. The L Word and L Word Gen Q Reboot Rounding off this list is the most iconic lesbian TV show of all time. I'm obviously talking about the L Word and the recent L Word Gen Q reboot. It is the gayest of gay, and it's a staple must-watch for sapphic TV. From the androgynous womanizer Shane to the OTP pairing of Bet and Tina, the show doesn't just have a lesbian lead, it is an ensemble of them to queer up your TV screen over six seasons to your heart's delight in all its raunchy, melodramatic, and sometimes problematic glory. It was revolutionary when it came out, and it still kind of is 16 years later. This year, L Word Gen Q also came out, and I haven't watched it, but I've heard it's a solid first season. Honourable mentions. Feel Good. I'm Not Okay With This. Dickinson. Everything Sucks. Legends of Tomorrow. And Hightown. I also couldn't make this list without mentioning Xena. While some might debate its eligibility on such a list, it is very gay, and if you want to find out more, check out my recent Xena video. What shows did I miss that are really gay? Comment below. If you like this type of content, like and subscribe. Until next time, lady lovers.